this is the best lens I've ever seen. Today we're going to talk about filters though. Hey guys, my name is John Sparkman, a photographer in Birmingham in the UK. In my past, however, I have been shooting a lot of film photography and I really love that kind of uh, subtle effect that film can give you, which sometimes digital just, just can't do. Even if you have the emulation, simulations, preset packs, whatever you put your pictures through, they're a bit too crisp and a bit too clean sometimes. You know, I picked myself up a Promist filter. Promist is a kind of filter made by the company Tiffin and you screw them on or, you know, if they're big plate ones, slide them in front of your cameras. You can use them in film and photo. And what they're there to do is to kind of blur the crispiness of your images a little bit, uh, only in certain areas. Uh, so this isn't like wiping, you know, Vaseline around your lens and just getting this smudged out effect. They've done it in a very specific way on these filters, so it only really affects your highlights. Now film, shooting film back in the day, you would get these things, uh, some people call it blooms, some call it halation. Uh, it's when you have like a really bright subject in frame, so maybe like a light or something. If you have that in frame, instead of having a crisp kind of light source, you actually have this kind of fuzzy kind of blur or bloom, like it's kind of leaked out of the highlights. You get that on film. It's very hard to reproduce that digitally, but using these filters, you can get it optically on the camera beforehand. It's also worth mentioning that these kind of filters, they blur the lighter side of things instead of the darker side. So things like your shadows are not gonna get blurry or fuzzy. It's only really your highlights, your really bright things. Also skin tones. If you're a portrait, wedding photographer, whatever, and you rely on shooting kind of people all the time, but you really don't wanna go down that road of having to edit pictures and going into Lightroom and kind of using a mask to, to make the skin texture a bit smoother smoother, the Promise filter will actually do that for you. It takes some of that texture out of the, the lighter parts of skin. I picked mine up in a 62mm variant uh, using Fujifilm lenses. 62 is actually pretty much the biggest that you get. And I got it dedicated for the 56mm 1.2 lens, this portrait behemoth. Then I also got a couple of step up rings. I got the one for the 18 to 55, the one I'm shooting with. This is a 58 to 62 mil. And then the 43 to 62, this is for my little uh, 23 millimeter F2 lens. So you, you stick that on the front of that tiny lens, you can then attach a big filter. I also do have typically a 12 millimeter Samyang, but I bought that after I bought the Tiffin filter. If I bought a step down ring, you would see kind of black edges where the, the ring kind of encroaches on that kind of image circle. Let's do some comparisons. This is a pretty standard newer 160 LED, one of those cheap and cheerful kind of battery powered ones. Uh, so this is without the filter on the front. And when we're looking into that, we can see so it's got a little bit of kind of a bloom where it kind of the, the, the highlights kind of spread out and kind of diffuse a bit like a cloud, but it's pretty sharp for the most of it. And with a diffusion panel, remember this, I'm just gonna attach myself a Promis filter to the camera. You can see we've got this like halation around it. It kind of looks like a, a cloud has formed in front of the, uh, the light source. And you can also see it kind of when we take off the diffusion filter. You should be able to see the individual uh, LEDs in a row here, but because of that filter, it's very diffused. I haven't been able to go out and really get any test images or footage with this apart from leaving the studio. And that's because I bought this uh, just before Christmas. If you're in the UK, you know exactly what happened. A couple of days after Christmas in 2020, we all got confined to our houses or our studios in this case. You can kind of eliminate a bit of post-processing by not having to really smooth the skin as much. It keeps the shadows in check so it doesn't really affect them, just the highlights. You get that lovely blooming. So when you're kind of aiming outside a window, you kind of get this cloudy effect around the, the harsh edges of the window. Looks like sun rays kind of coming in through the window. And it, and it gives that emulation of film. Now, if you're applying film filters like I do, I use the Mastin Labs presets for Lightroom. If I was attaching one, maybe like the Portra one, it would give me that more characteristic feel. Then I can add, you know, my grain on top of that as well, and uh, everybody's happy at that point. Now, the downsides to this filter is you kind of feel a little bit robbed. They're about £80 for what you get. And what, and what you get is it looks like a UV filter 
and someone's kind of got a black spray can and just giving it a little misting over. It's got, you know, loads of little tiny, tiny spots, too small to even take a photo of to show you. But it does feel once you get it, where did my 80 pounds go? You know, you could kind of spend that on like an extra flash or some modifiers or a good light stand or something, microphone for instance. You know, as with any kind of photography, videography accessories, there are pros and cons to each piece of kit. Once you get past the buyer's remorse of this one, get yourself some cheap step up, not step down adapters, this might be a handy piece of kit for yourself. If you like this content, stick around and subscribe. I'm on my journey to a thousand subscribers once I'm now be extraordinarily happy. I've had some great responses in the recent uh, kind of weeks and months during this uh, third lockdown in the UK. Been able to make a lot of content for you guys without having to, you know, stop and go out and socialize with other people. If you like this kind of stuff though, please subscribe. I'll see you in a future video.